So, uh, Christine, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the health of uh, the health implications, you know, in the port communities. Mm-hmm. And and then you mentioned in the break that the NRDC has done studies on mm-hmm. truck drivers and who are being exposed to uh, diesel fuel. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So the Natural Resources Defense Council uh, here in Oakland put air monitoring filters in the cabs of uh, some of the truck drivers here in Oakland and found that truck drivers actually have a 200 in a million uh, cancer rate risk. And the acceptable rate for the Environmental Protection Agency of the U.S. is one in a million. And they're 200 in a million? 200 in a million. They have an incredibly elevated risk uh, because of the diesel particulate matter Uh that gets trapped in their cab as they sit there idling. So one thing I didn't get to mention that the truck drivers are actually, because of how the system works, are paid by the load. So they're not paid like regular workers by the hour. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, from those different points at the warehouse, at the port, they'll be waiting in long, long lines to pick up those huge containers. And they'll sit there idling because they don't want to lose their place, and they move a couple of feet at a time. So that whole time they're idling, the smoke is Mm -hmm. just continually um, kind of adding up. And they sit there for hours and hours. They can wait anywhere from four to six hours, two to six hours, just sitting there. And it it adds up. It adds up in their cab and also in in the environment. Yeah. Yeah. And so the worst of that ends up in the driver and in the communities um, directly adjacent to port. So, for instance, I know mostly about the Bay Area because I'm Mm -hmm. here. Um, West, The community of West Oakland, which is right next to the Port of Oakland, is surrounded by both the Port of Oakland and three freeways. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about a community like West Oakland, one in five children in West Oakland have asthma. Wow, that's, that's a large amount. Yes, yeah. and a recent health uh, risk assessment uh, that was done on the community found that residents in West Oakland can have a life expectancy that is uh, reduced by 10 years than mm-hmm. residents just in the Oakland Hills that are a few miles away. Oh, that's extraordinary. And this yeah. is primarily due to the air quality uh-huh. um, in West Oakland. So the health risk from this, and primarily due to trucks moving through the neighborhood, uh, it, that is what can be attributed to this health risk factor. And I just want to go back to the cancer risk. Is it lung cancer or is it any different? I think it's a, it's a whole host of cancers, mm-hmm. um, but primarily I think definitely respiratory cancers. So what can consumers do realistically? You know, we can't mm-hmm. buy our printers. I mean, we're not gonna, they're not being made right here locally or yeah. our Q-tips, you know. So Yeah, you can't buy, right. like we said, we can't buy Q-tips in Marin County <laughs> yeah. or, or here in Oakland, um, unfortunately. I think for supernatural consumers and, and those of us trying to le- live a greener life, The first things for the non-food products is to reduce as much as we can. So things like paper towels and printers, think about the reduce-reuse principle. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I started using cloth napkins and Mm -hmm. cloth, you know, uh, cleaners around my house instead of paper towels Mm -hmm. as much as possible. And I know that that's that's easy to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are some other good ideas? I think generally buying local Buying mm-hmm. locally produced and sold goods is a step in the right direction. Right. A- easy to do at a farmer's market, for example. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, you know, obviously the the ideal is local organic. Mm-hmm. I will even hazard to say that because of the carbon footprint, in addition to uh, the diesel pollution, which, by the way, diesel is a co-pollutant of greenhouse gases, so on mm-hmm. top of the environmental health factors of diesel, you should you can also add diesel onto your kind of carbon footprint mm-hmm. uh, list of, of things you would be taking off of that. You you should also add that in. Buying local organic. Local sometimes is is just as important as going organic. Right. Uh, in addition to that, I think people should plug into advocating for local green jobs. Right. Talk, talk about that. What? How do you define a green job? I think most people in the green movement and how it's been made popular today. And I think it's attributable to, uh, you know, unfortunately what happened to Van Jones in the in the executive, um, what happened, and he was wonderful in, in propagating this idea of, of green jobs, is most people think of it as a job installing solar panels, and they think of it as green energy, mm-hmm. which, yes, it is. 
uh, when I think of a green job, I also think of, for instance, the truck driver or the bus driver, and that all of their air that they're getting in the cab or the bus should also be clean, that every job should be a job that does not harm the environment or human health, and that every job should be a green job. So as we... As we move from, you know, dirty economies to green economies, that every job should be a green job. And you're going to start hearing about, I think, investment, both local and federal and state investment into jobs and that all of these jobs should then be green jobs and that people should start tapping into kind of this new movement around that. And that when you start thinking about um, transit-oriented development, livable communities, that these are uh, ideas that I think are inspiring and ideas of, of different ways of living, I think, that we all can, you know, can buy into mm -hmm. and start thinking about um, really investing in. Yeah, that, that's really good advice. And, um, you know, I was thinking about, you know, how important, because I've always known about how important food is. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to buy blueberries from New Zealand or mm -hmm. something because you hear about, or Fuji water even, you know, shipping over. But I I didn't really think about the I impact of, of the the things I have in my home, you know, until mm -hmm. I, I was going, I was doing research to interview you. And uh, I really think it's eye opening, you know, that, um, as you say, reuse, you know, uh, and recycle and, um, and really think about, take a look at what's around in your home and see what you can really buy locally. And, you know, I was thinking about even the farmers markets, they make wonderful candles, for mm -hmm. example, out of beeswax yeah. from local hives. Um, and clothes. Mm -hmm. um, people are, are um, knitting and crocheting and making great clothing items here that we don't really have to. If you, and if you see sort of the the label on a on an item of clothing and, and it's coming from another country, you you may want to think twice about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Or even clothes swaps. If if an item is already here. Mm -hmm then why bring another item here? You can swap it with somebody who's already here. You know, you don't yeah. need to bring a second piece here. And it's it's just, it's interesting to think of of revitalizing local economy. Uh, it's, it's kind of a new way of thinking around what's here and how to reuse and and reconnect with even your 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 economies that are here and your businessmen and business people who are here. Yeah, that's a good point, reconnecting, because, uh, you know, so often we are so disconnected from our communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that when I go to my farmer's market, I, I getting to know the farmers mm -hmm. and and finding out about their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I don't know what the distance that they travel. I don't know how far. I mean, I know they take small trucks. Now, those small trucks don't use diesel, do they? They're, they're probably... It, it depends. Usually a lot of them are on smaller, the smaller uh, two axle trucks are not. Medium duty trucks might be diesel, but they use definitely less mm -hmm. uh, than a heavier duty. And if people who are listening to the show live around a port area, um, what what can they do, you know, mm -hmm. to make their voices heard? Mm -hmm. I would say uh, everybody has an air district a regional air district that sh they should make their voices heard in. They should look at their local nonprofits if they have environmental health or justice groups around them. If you aren't already, you should definitely join Center for Environmental Health's Generation Green uh, action group, online action group. We can be found at generationgreen.org. Uh, Always get in touch with us, but learn to advocate for yourself. There's so many groups out there who I think are finding out what's going on. Look what's around you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are in a port community, is there a factory by you? Is there a dry cleaner? Is there an auto factory? I think it's to be aware and to know what's to know your neighborhood, I think, is really the first important step. Right. To know what's around you. And I know that the... The Generation Green and Center for Environmental Health gives action alerts. Yes. So, so tell us a little bit about those. What, what, what are those? So, see us. Generation Green is our kind of action center. We are constantly sending out pieces of interesting pieces of information. We recently had uh, an agreement, a settlement agreement with forty stores around lead and handbags. If you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, we found lead in purses and got 
40 stores to agree to get them out and um, take them off the shelves. And we will send you an action alert that says, you know, this is how to pick out the best handbags. Uh -huh. And then we also told you Walmart didn't agree. And you got to tell Walmart CEO, hey, get those off. So that was one action we got to do. I know there's also, you had one about cadmium in, in, yes. in jewel, costume yes. jewelry that was sold and all the little teenage girls are yes, buying. Yes, yeah. yes. And if, kids. If those hearts and mm -hmm. gothic black jewelry, I think. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> to get the cadmium, which is another toxic heavy metal out of there. So you you will constantly be plugged into what kind of the environmental hazards and products are. Um, and we will alert you to that and tell you what you can do to help. And really, you know, it's kind of consumer advocacy in the moment. And mm -hmm. you can be a part of that. And do you have another project you're working on? Or is this is your main, your main... You know, I'm, I'm always working on different stuff. Uh, right now, I am also working on uh, toys mm -hmm. and children's products. We are... Um, always working on uh, education and outreach around how to look at hazards around toys and children's products. We look at raincoats, umbrellas, belts. Uh, we find less and less toxic hazards in toys, but we are working with um, childhood lead poison prevention programs around the Bay Area and get the Lead Out Coalition on doing some education outreach, especially as we go into, we're gonna do back to school stuff. Um, so I'm working around that as well.